Good afternoon, folks. This is TJ, and this is URLaw.org's premium member web meeting for July 20th, 2021. And I think it, I think it's maybe it's July 20th that men landed on the moon, and today some civilians flew into space. So kind of a neat day. Uh, welcome to everybody for being here. Uh, as you know, I also like to start off every call with a prayer to put our priorities right. So those of you who wish to join in, feel free. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for the wonderful gifts you've given us to, to be together, to learn from your word, and to constantly remind ourselves that our real authority does come from your word. And uh, there's so much to learn there. And, um, it, and just to help us in our cluttered, difficult world understand that sometimes the, the answer is so simple. And um, we're going to especially focus on that today. So the Lord, I ask for your blessings and Thank you for your thoughts to, to come up with this approach today. And I ask for a special blessing over everybody on this webinar, that they're all uh, blessed and protected in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So, uh, as always, just remind you that our webinars are for the void of legal advice, as it says right on our web webinar page, which means that uh, we're not here to give you legal advice. We don't give legal advice. We're not your attorney. We don't run with your case and go to court with you uh, because that's just not physically possible. But so many people in so many places, our goal is to teach a man how to fish, not do the fishing for him. And hopefully with the authority and power that each of you have, you'll get that. You have the legal authority. Especially today's conversation is going to be relevant to that. Um, I want to get right into it, and then um, we'll get into your questions and so forth. By the way, remember, if you have a success story, I want you to be the first to raise your hands, because that's what we want to go through first. Any success stories, anything that sounds like a success story, we'd like to hear about it. So when we get to the point of Q&A, I will ask for success stories first before questions. So keep that in mind. Um, some of our basic tools to remind, be reminded of. Uh, is our basic uh, course that we recommend everybody take. It's optional, but it's essential to dealing with the system because you got to know how the, I don't want to call them the enemy, but how they uh, operate and how to utilize their system to win under their rules. Believe it or not, it can be done. And that's the How to Win in Court Without a Lawyer course. It's at urlaw.org forward slash JD, or just use our website forward slash JD. If you're interested in finding more out about forming your own private ministry to have a, uh, a solid way to operate and to go out there and perform your life's mission, uh, it's forward slash ministry, urlaw.org forward slash ministry. If you want to learn about our Slam Dunk Criminal Defense Program where essentially we show you some very powerful ways to, um, I don't want to say gum up the works, but essentially put yourself in a position to win a criminal case. If there's no armed parties, nobody's out there damaged by what you've done, and, uh, you know, you basically you're not guilty of, a, of a, what we would call a crime of harm to someone. Uh, then, uh, or even putting somebody at risk, by the way, uh, then uh, you can look at our Slam Dunk Criminal Defense Program. That's at urlaw.org forward slash slam dunk. We also have information on our status coaching. A lot of people are taking advantage of that, and that includes a full year of free membership when you enroll for that as well. So take a look at that. That's on our join page, as well as other coaching options on our join page. That's yourlaw.org forward slash join. So just remember, forward slash JD, forward slash ministry, forward slash slam dunk, forward slash status, and forward slash join are direct links to some of those programs. There are obviously links to it right here on the website as well. So if you're browsing the site, uh, there's plenty of information on these various programs right here as well under the join and upgrade coaching areas. A little update on the um, equity training we've just started. Now, remember, we're also offering coaching in the equity area. If you need individual coaching on that, there is a video on that on the premium member page that you can look up. Just click on the premium member page, and there's some videos on the equity. And we're also starting an equity class. It just started this week. Uh, we can still accept a few more applicants if you're still interested. Uh, it's basically full, but we figured we could probably squeeze in another five people. And so if you're interested and it's still in the first week, there's plenty of time to catch up with what we've just started. We've just done an overview anyway. It's all on video and materials that you can start reading. Uh, but if you want to find out more about the equity class, again, that information is 
It's here on the premium member page um, under this heading of equity. And um, there you go. And then the, it talks about the, for, that's for coaching. And we have information on the class as well. If you have questions about the class and you can't find it, let me know. We also added a couple of videos to the premium member page. I think you'll like this. is how to not get yourself caught in the trap of assuming the, um, well, taking on the burden of proof, I guess. That's, that's what most of us do is we go in there and start answering questions and making claims. This video shows you a very clever way to avoid doing that. Uh, this is my friend, Kerry. Um, he's got, we have a couple of videos here. Actually, we have a video here as well as down here under the tax section on the, um, on the page. Um, let's see, where's that down here? Yeah, tax ideas and resources. There's a couple of videos there as well, which you might want to watch about how to, if you're early on and it's essentially a tax situation, he's got some pretty good ideas about how to handle your affairs, and um, it's definitely an alternative way to get things done. Uh, during the meeting tonight, please reserve the chat for actual questions directed to me, not so much just questions and comments, because what will happen is, is I'll miss your questions and all the, the clutter that tends to start to form there. Uh, if you have a question, uh, put it there. And be clear and complete in your question enough that I can answer it. Our Telegram group. Uh, if you're not using the Telegram group, I'm just telling you, you're using, you're missing a lot. Uh, we have a premium members Telegram group. We have one for the equity class members. We have one for the slam dunk members. So if you're in any of those groups, you need to send me a, uh, a you know, just contact me on Telegram. The information on how to communicate with us is all here on the page on how to communicate with us and how to reach me on Telegram first. Send me an invitation and I will then invite you to those groups, depending on which one you're qualified for. You know, if you're in the slam dunk plan, say I want to be led into the slam dunk group. I'll check your name and make sure you're eligible and we'll get you in there. But the discussions there are excellent. The equity group in particular is important. If you're not part of that and you're in the class, I think we only have one member that can't seem to figure out how to get Telegram to work, but uh, other than that, um, a lot of our content is being posted there, and it's excellent stuff. So um, now um, I want to on tonight's lesson. I want to talk about um, how not to be a sovereign, how not to be a UCC expert, how not to have to be an expert in the law to understand that the best remedy we have is the oldest remedy we have. We don't have to depend on uh, those books, the UCC or the statutes or the codes or you know, the theories of being a sovereign. Uh, it, 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 what we have to rely upon is our intelligence and our knowledge. The Bible says we perish for a lack of knowledge. Okay? Now, some people have gotten, and a lot of people have gotten in the, the idea that, you know, well, I glow in the dark, and I'm a sovereign, and I'm a more, or I'm a whatever. You're not a whatever anything. You're just a man who has to do business in a commercial world. That's what you are. We all are. We've got tools. We've been given tools. The birth certificate is a tool. To me, it's not the enemy. It's not a, it's not a evil thing. I have a social security number. It's not an, it's not an enemy. We're, we're in a system where there's no money, so we need those tools in order to operate. What we need to do is learn how to operate in that system in a way where we're peaceful. And when we don't operate peacefully, they do things like arrests and tickets and taxes and these things where we, we refuse to, we just start to fight them, and then they come after us for fighting because we're not being honorable. And tonight we're going to talk to you about how to be honorable and it doesn't mean you're saying, I like the guy, you know, he's my enemy, I'm going to hug him and kiss him. But you know what? The Bible has something to say about that. And believe it or not, when you apply this in these legal situations, it works very well. Uh, we're studying this class on equity as a separate, very highly specialized class. We're going into this in detail. But the reality is if you get the basics, you can figure a lot of this out. So we're going to talk about some of those basics here tonight. You just don't want to get yourself caught up in this world of being a, a sovereign. So 
uh, put together this piece here. And the nice thing about tonight's lesson plan is that I basically, with the exception of a few lines, copied right out of the Bible. <laughs> because uh, this is not meant to be a Bible sermon in the sense of, well, you do this and you're going to go float on a cloud someday. That's, I mean, that's, that's how you believe and look at that is up to you. Whether you're a Catholic, Mormon, or a Buddhist, I don't care. Well, what I want you to understand is the information is in this book, and it's in the King James Version only. You'll find similar-looking ones in other Bibles, but those other Bibles, in my opinion, aren't even legitimate because they don't stick to the core words that actually have the power. They've changed them. And you change a word in a sentence, like from God to God's, you have an entirely different concept. And a lot of these newer Bibles have done that, these modernistic Bibles. They may be a little easier to read, but they also have the problem of not teaching you how to read. So... Um, my mentor, who's taught me a lot about this, is very, very private. Not a single person on this call except maybe one or two, because I've told you who he is, would ever know who this is. Um, I can tell you that um, if you've heard of people like David Windmiller and, and um, um, Gould and those guys, they might know who this is, because where do you think they got their information? So I've been very blessed to have a very high level source information on this stuff. And the interesting thing is, is the higher I go in studying this, the simpler it gets. And it comes always right back to this. Now, you've all heard of the concept of accepted for value, you know, to settle a debt, because you're all trying to get out of some kind of financial thing. Well, this is bigger than that. Yes, that applies, but you have to understand that every instrument that they're bringing to us out of their bankrupt system is a bankrupt document, even an indictment, a charge, a bill, a uh, summons, a warrant. All these things are financial instruments, actually financial instruments. Don't believe me? Look up the definition of a warrant. Look up the definition of a charge. Okay, these are all financial instruments. It may not look or feel that way when you first see it, but what we need to do is look at source definitions, and you'll start to find these things. For example, um, uh, one word I, I looked up tonight, just, just as a fun one to look up, I'm going to zoom down to this, is remittance. Now, when you first hear that, you think, well, that doesn't have anything to do with me until you read it a couple of times. But what is a remittance? It's when money, this is out of Black's Law 5th, and probably similar in the 6th, money sent by one person to another, either in specie, bill of exchange, check, or otherwise. Now, the reality is we should go look up the definition of money before we answer this question. We should look up specie before you try to answer this question. You should look up bill of exchange before you answer this question. You should look up check before you answer this question. You see how many different words are within one definition? That they all have a significant meaning? But I'm going to give you my quick summary because I want to move right through this. In a bankrupt system, there is really no money. Money is promissory notes or essentially documents, contracts. Promissory note is a performance contract that's created by one person and given to another. When they offer you, they give you an offer, a summons, a ticket, a bill, a charge, an indictment. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to propose to you, if you look up these definitions, you're going to have some eyes, the same that I do, that that is money. It's a performance contract that has something of value attached to it, your performance. Our labor is what gives anything value in our system. And when we attach ourselves to it and promise our labor and performance, the contract is, it becomes worth something. So it is money sent by one person to another. Now, if you've understood that accepted for value, which is not really a proper term, but acceptance is, it's a different term, different term than accepted for value. It is when we receive the bill, that is the money. People go, oh, it's got to go to the DTC and the UCC and you got to do this and that. No, you don't. It's all right there in front of you. It's on the document. It's a positive digit number. Or if it's a performance number, like to do something, that's still a positive digit number. And they've given you the money. The money's in your hands. Why don't you just give it to them? Give it back to them. They printed it, 
created it out of thin air, created a performance contract, but what we do instead is we deny it, we argue it, instead of settling it. And guess what? They're sitting there going, hey, this guy doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know he's a power. He wants to be a debtor, a defendant. Okay, we'll have a little fun with that too. We'll make money off that too. You get to choose. Do you want to be a defendant debtor or do you want to accept the money that's on the document, the instrument itself? And in some species, the member says either species, bill exchange, check, or otherwise, any offer. That's my add-on is any offer. Has the money on it. You don't need to look further. The key is, is you've got to go to a public trustee, though, who can correct the books Take that positive number that's on the instrument and make it, put it up against the ledger of saying something is owed and balance the books. All public trustees, people that work for the public under an oath, have that duty to do that when we ask. But most of us think something else is going on. We're in court. He's a judge. He's going to throw me in jail. Instead of, he's a clerk. Who sits in front of the judge? The clerk. What does the clerk do at a bank? They receive the money. They do the transactions. Whatever paper it is. I had one banker once tell me. She says, we were told one time if anything has a signature on it, we need to take it in hand and treat it as if it's valuable. That was from a, a, a bank manager. She's, they said value in paper. And in, in, in this legal system, it's all Species of money, bills of exchange, checks. The check is, by the way, like a warrant. Um, all these things are just financial instruments that are moving around in a bankrupt system where there's no money. So what is the money? These promissory notes, these contracts. So they need to be directly set off directly by either accepting it and returning it and saying, I accept this as money, now take it back and balance the books. Done. Nothing's owed. And, again, it doesn't matter whether it's civil or criminal. This can be done and has been done. So we need to understand what is, what is, what is acceptance, and we'll get back to a little bit more of this. So let's go back to the origins of this. Now, this wasn't just invented when HJR 192 rolled around. It was invented, you know, when they changed the gold system back in the 70s. It wasn't, it wasn't invented by the Uniform Commercial Code. But those things reflect this in them. This is very important to understand. The system has always been a bankrupt system. Back to Leviticus, you know, we were told if you rub your nose the wrong way, you've got to kill an animal and give it to God or sacrifice it. If you scratched your ear, you had to sacrifice something. But eventually everybody started running out of things to sacrifice. It's a bankrupt system. Everybody's, you know, bankrupt. And that system failed. Along came Jesus and says, hey, I'll be your financial transaction engineer if you want to look at it that way. Now you can t I'm trying to take it away from just the spiritual talk for a minute. Just look at the practical thing he did. He says, I'll pay off all your sins, past, present, and future. That's what the cross represented. Past, present, and future. And he became the transmitting utility of the past through the present and into the future. And then he said, it is done before he died. It is settled. Now, we, again, just watch this in a movie or something like that and think, well, that's really a nice, dramatic, beautiful thing, and it is. But I really think that there was a much deeper message in it, which is why we rely on King James Version, because it tends to use the correct words that were most accurately close to the English conversion of the words that we use. That's why we use it. So uh, let's look through some of this. Just going to move positions here real quick. Um, this is Matthew 5, 25, verse 25. I'm sorry, I should have had this up on screen. And uh, the King James Version, all right? So in verse 7, and you can, we, can, we can read all this, but I'm just going to jump around a little bit here. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall attain mercy. Okay. 
Now, he's talking about people that might just just you, <clears throat> but they need to give you mercy. But you need to properly show them that you're worthy of that, right? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. So when they come after you, are you going to offer to make peace, or are you going to fight? What if they're not actually warring against you? They're just looking for you to see if you'll make peace. Is it not true that if two parties come together before court, the prosecutor and the defendant, they come together and they come to an agreement, that's a peacemaker, peacemaking, that the court loses its jurisdiction? That's true. I've heard judges say it firsthand. The words I heard once was, if the two sides agree, who am I to judge further? Now, he didn't come out and say, oh, I don't have jurisdiction. He just put it in different words. You have to listen to what they're saying. Don't look at these magic words. Um, Blessed are, are they which are persecuted for righteous sake. In other words, those who are persecuted are, can be given a righteous blessing. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You need to accept that. When they're coming after you, you have to totally do the opposite of what your instinct tells you to do. The earthly man, the evil nature, if you will, wants to fight. And boy, if they fight, they end up in bad places. Think I am not, this is from Jesus himself, think uh, not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He fulfilled the law for all of us. He gave us a blessing, an opportunity to be free by accepting his blessing. Now, again, I'm trying to put this in very practical terms. If we would just listen. Verily I say unto you, till heaven, and when he says that, he's saying this is really important, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one little, one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. All the laws can be fulfilled for you. You don't have to fight it. And then down here in, um, I think, let's see, my, my other notes here, I was going over this earlier. Um, 38. Agreeing with thine, well, let's go to 24. Uh, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. That means my document I signed and accepted and laid down before them. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. That means, how many times you heard me say, go to the prosecutor and try to get something done first? But when you skip the steps, things turn out well. So, it says, agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him. Lest at any time... The adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou shalt be cast into prison. So again, it's saying, if you don't do this first part, then you deserve the second part. This is, guys, this is our legal system. It's what you're walking into. Agree. That means accept or agree with them. But get it settled. Give them the ability to zero the account so there's nothing left over your head. Otherwise, you can be left to the judge. Do you want to go to court? Be left it up to the judge? Be then delivered unto the officer and cast into prison? Isn't that exactly what they do? Whether that's prison or a fine or whatever, or judgment. Very important verse, guys. It's telling you what to do. And you think, well, my case, all this, that, and the other thing. You have to agree with thine enemy. I don't care if it's child support or murder. There's something to be done there that's going to change the outcome. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to walk away with harming somebody. It doesn't say that. It's saying find a way to get to a remedy quickly. So, but I say unto you that ye uh, resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy cheek, turn to, turn to him the other also. In other words, accept it. That's an acceptance. You're accepting it. Turn the other cheek, accept it, and say, okay, but I'm with God. God will settle my accounts. 
You see, they won't see this unless you do it. It's your actions that can speak louder than your words. It's certainly louder than a document. People look for magic documents. So, and if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. Don't fight over petty things. That's what it's saying. And whoever shall compel thee to go a mile, with him go twain. So in other words, tell you, just, just go with us down this path, and we'll work it out with you. I mean, sometimes it's going to feel very scary. But you're doing it to show acceptance and honor. Does it mean walk into the jail and volunteer? No, it means just follow the entire thought process through. Give to him and ask us thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. If somebody needs something from you, help them. All right, um, 43, uh, ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you, and pray for them with despiteful use, which despitefully use you and persecute you. In other words, I know you think the guy is an enemy. They're all corrupt. They're all crooked. There might be. But you know how you disable somebody like that? You show them love. When you fight them, it's like an energy they can use. 45. That ye may be the children of your father, which is in heaven, and he maketh his son to rise on evil and on the good, and sendeth rain unto the just and unto the unjust. In other words, leave it up to the father. All right? There's a power in acceptance. It doesn't mean I'm taking the blame and I'm saying I'm guilty. Those are not the same words as acceptance. You've got to know the difference. And then for if ye if, uh, love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? Now, by the way, in that day, publicans was a tax collector. You're saying even the publican deserves it. And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publican so? In other words, even the, you know, in these days, that was the lowest person. Uh, but they even deserve it. And it would be amazing what can happen when you start acting that way. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. In other words, if you're fighting, you're not being perfect. If you're accepting, you're being perfect. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you, it is the remedy that fits almost all remedies. Is learning how to be a creditor and accept. We talked about acceptance and being a creditor before, so I won't go into every aspect of it. But essentially it's this. A creditor is a commercial term, but it also means someone who is in position to issue the authority. You're the creator of something, not the, the consumer of something. So you accept. The goal is to accept. You always get to acceptance. That forms a contract which is going to be favorable to you. Then, if you can't do that, you might use conditional acceptance. Then asking a couple of leading questions, but always leading to acceptance. So when you say, I, can, I, you know, I accept that if you can do this, well, you're saying something that is saying, I'll accept it if you will do this. And if they say, I will do this, now you've got an acceptance. You see, conditional acceptance is the road to an acceptance sometimes. Sometimes you can accept the offer. Or you just do an acceptance and remittance. A remittance means you're treating it as a financial transaction. So they handed you the document, you autograph it, date it, write accept it on there, and you send it back. We like to also use a notice that goes into some more detail, but it essentially it's the same idea. Okay? But statements, you start saying, well, I'm of this and I'm of that, and you can't do this, and you don't have jurisdiction, blah, blah, blah. You can't do that at the same time as you do an acceptance. You can't defend the case. You can't accept a lawyer and, def and, and then do a remittance because they're there to defend an argument. So you can't be arguing and accepting at the same time. Let me say that again. 
You cannot argue and accept at the same time. That's when they say, okay, mental evaluation, this person is double-minded. People go, oh, you want to get a psyche eval. No, he saw somebody who's being double-minded in most cases. And you asked for it. Because if you don't know how to do an acceptance, which is hard to do, this is the hardest thing. This is way harder than saying guilty or not guilty and just going to jail. That's easy. Being free and accepting purely and staying with God, just as that whole verse describes, is the hard thing for men to do. Because men are emotional. Women are emotional. We're trained to fight instead of do acceptance. So we're going to give you an exercise here. If you remember, when you're contacted by a public agent, they're going to make you an offer. They're going to say, excuse me, sir, we're the FBI. We'd like to ask you a few questions. That's an offer. How might you respond? So what I'm going to do when we get to the Q&A is I want to ask you to answer this question. I'll ask you a question. I want to see what your acceptance looks like or conditional acceptance looks like. Or I'll see if you're going to argue or make statements. As soon as you argue and make statements, you go to jail. So you have to ask Querpel's questions carefully that lead to desired conclusions and agreement. Then you have full acceptance. You zero the liability. You zero the account. So, and by the way, if you screw up and you make a statement, just throw, in, throw out a question inquiry at the end, like, isn't that true? <laughs> or, you know, uh, no, that's not me unless you can prove it's me. You see, I mean, I, I take what I screw up and add something to it to, to turn it into an inquiry, okay? Um, so do this as a daily exercise. We're going to talk about this here in a little bit. So when you're approached with anything from now on, say, I want to accept this. But if it's not acceptable as is, then well, how do you want to conditionally accept it? But don't make your condition so a fighting condition. Make it a condition that leads to an agreement that you can all live with. Instead of saying, well, you don't have this, and you don't have that, and you're a dirty cop, and blah, 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 blah. It's, well, Your Honor, how can we get this settled here today? What is it going to take to get this get an agreement to get this thing peacefully taken care of? You know, you just want to start asking questions that lead to your goal rather than challenging them. That's a totally different concept. So essentially, that's the outline of the lesson. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it over to um, Mark. Go ahead. All right. <clears throat> well, as far as success, it's, well, it's, it, it, <clears throat> um, I was having a problem with you know, ongoing problem with the township that I live in with, with zoning and everything with the, you know, they, they, the neighbors complain about the weeds and everything and wound up, you know, as you said, like going to them, they're really not looking to find me the thousands of dollars that they were threatening me with. They just wanted to get it done. So like you were talking about going to them, going to them and, and like, okay, how, what, how, can we, how can we make this happen? How can we, how can we get, how can we get this resolved? And so that I'm just kind of a, yeah, that, that works too. Oh, I forgot to mention, I have my own story this week. So I went to um, the Washington State University campus to go check out my uh, son's housing situation. He's getting ready to go there in a few weeks. And um, I, uh, he's a brilliant computer, computer guy. He's going there to study computer science. And um, I parked... Uh, you know, across from this road, maybe 50 feet from the building, it can, this parking lot probably holds a thousand cars. There was one car in the parking lot and mine. I parked there for a moment. I ran out, ran across the street, knocked on the manager's door, asked him a quick question, took a picture of his phone number, looked, to, looked up for a couple of facility things that are on the facility, went back to my car. It wasn't there, gone 10 minutes. And there's a sixty dollar ticket out there. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't believe it was a sixty dollar ticket. And that uh, okay, so you know, uh I wasn't happy about it, but I just stopped. I just thought right, scared, I'll I'll deal with this later and I went home and I said, you know, this is pretty pretty obvious. This is in very in definitely did feel like an equitable type of agreement. So what I did is I wrote up and actually I had an appeal form online. I went online and I said, basically, and I don't have it written out for you, but I said, look, uh, I realize you have to enforce your tickets, but you understand the school's out of session. Nobody's there. I'm a paying customer. 
coming to bring my kid to your school, and I'm just trying to get some information. I was there. There was nobody around, no competition. It was blocking those spaces. So exactly how is this an equitable situation to give me a $60 fine for just doing that? I just put that question up. And first response was a complete dismissal. Why? So I asked for an equitable remedy. Now, I could have said, I go in the dark, I'm a sovereign, I know more than you, and you know, you don't have jurisdiction, and blah, 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 blah. And you know, I was on their property, they have some jurisdiction. I acknowledged all that. So instead of fighting on my jurisdiction, I just accepted and said, yes, but what do you really think is fair and equitable considering the circumstances? And that was their response. I mean, I mean, I thought they would cut it in half, you know, and I was just looking to save a buck. But they dismissed it completely because I took a different tone. I didn't fight them. Very, very cool. Yeah. And um, the last time I ever got a ticket, I did the same thing. All right. Two, two other things. Um, I had a question. Now you, uh, gosh, maybe a month and a half, two months ago, you had mentioned about um, like when you go to get a driver's license, how, you know, an alternate way of, of signing instead of putting your name down. I, and I, I wrote it down. I couldn't remember what it was. And I'm going to get my license in two weeks, so <laughs> to ask for how to sign it without, oh, without um, shall we say, well, what, without, without agreeing. I've done it, and I'm, this isn't legal advice. I'm just telling you how I've done it. Is I um, where there's a signature line, you can either sign your name and then above that right here. It's hard to do on those little plastic signing things, you know. But you want to sign very clearly. You don't just scribble your name. You want to make sure that it's clear and legible and it's your full name. And then above that, with clear letters, without prejudice. Now, it's very hard to do on those little plastic things. So I said I had to scratch it and do it a couple times. But I've also done similar things where I don't even put a signature. I just write the word, without prejudice. Now, again, making sure it's clear. If you scribble it, it just looks like you're trying to obscure something. I want to be clear. I want, I want an acceptance, right? I want their acceptance. Correct, okay. But I'm putting my terms on the acceptance when I do that. I'm limiting my liability. And if they accept it, then we have an agreement. There's an acceptance. That's an acceptance. That's equity. And uh, they'll, they, in each case, I did it with my sons, my wife, myself. The same thing happened at the DMV. Same thing. They said, oh, well, uh, I don't think you can sign like this. And I said, Really? It appears I just did. <laughs> what do you mean I can? Yeah. You know, that's a can I question. And I said, well, here's the thing. That's how my legal counsel tells me to do it. Are you going to give me legal advice? And I always ask that question. And then like, uh, no, sir, no, sir, yeah, this is fine. There was the acceptance. So now i got my terms and conditions on the contract. you got to be willing to – it's not a confrontation. It's, you have to be willing to – Make a deal. It's all negotiation. Even if it's uncomfortable, you got to practice at it. You know, I mean, it's just you don't get to become a good negotiator by not practicing <laughs> and avoiding it. You know, I've told my story about my son's ticket. It, it, came, it came down to the end. I, it was a, literally a back and forth. Let's make a deal, negotiation deal. Even after he lost, and he ended up getting a way better deal. So. It's never over till it's over. Fourth quarter isn't over till that final, you know, buzzer goes. And uh, you can keep negotiating to the very end, and you should. I, I negotiate for everything. It drives my family crazy, but just the way it is. <laughs> and Because uh, I, I, I want to see what I, have, what I can get. It's fun. To me, it's a fun thing to do. And, and these things you're dealing with are all negotiations. Yeah, I go into flea market. You know, always, always negotiate. It's just like that. I mean, it really isn't. The courts, these are commercial courts. They're, they're, they're making offers, and you're making counter offers, and you're moving towards a settlement. Don't fight them over. You know, you you can't do this because your judge ship came from some judge in 1850, and he didn't have jurisdiction then, and you don't have it now. I mean, you whatever. Just these bizarre arguments people try to get off on, and all that does is create more problems. You know, I mean, I saw a video of a guy in a courtroom in Oregon City, close by. It was on a national TV show about the, the, the show. It's court, it's like court TV, but it's called something else now. And um, 
this clip showed this guy. He's sitting in the audience, and he obviously was going to be a sovereign citizen. And so they call his name, and he says, I'm here on that matter, and did that traditional sort of script. And they, they've prefaced it that this guy's been there many times before, so they knew who he was. He says, I'm here on that matter, and he goes, he goes oh, he's not here? Oh, he's not in the bar? Okay, $25,000 warrant. Boom, the judge just said that that quick before he could even go to play his little game even further. And the guy goes, oh, well, wait, wait, I wanted to. And the guy goes, oh, so it is you, huh? Okay, now arrest him. <laughs> and so they got him a $25,000 warrant and an arrest because he really just wanted to play that stupid game. Instead of dealing with the problem he had, which was a minor issue, could have been dealt with. You see, sometimes we work so hard to avoid the issue that we don't realize we already have a remedy right before us. It's on the document. Accept it, settle it, and then ask them if there's anything else we need to do. Way easier. All right. Um, um, well, there's, there's one thing I wanted to share with you. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if you how much you've covered this or not, but um, there's a... Uh, a woman I, I occasionally like occasionally listen to her. Um, her name is Catherine Austin Fitz. Um, she used to be a undersecretary for HUD, and she exposed a ton of corruption. Um, but she has a, a site called Solari, S O L A R S O L A R I dot com, and on that she has forms that people can download for free. Um, the, the one's a five-page form. It's a form for students attending colleges or universities that are requiring COVID injections. Oh, really? Okay. And basically what it's doing is like it's, it's, it's informing them like, okay, I know this. Do you know this? And it just goes through, you know, that it, will, my health, will my student health insurance cover me if I'm, if I'm injured? Um, and it finally, yeah. finally finds, winds up with, you know, um, okay, understanding that, you know, if you're requiring me to do this, then you're accepting liability for anything yeah. that happens to me. That's a, con that's a conditional what, acceptance. Yeah, and, and what, what I'm, you know, the, the, the feedback that she's been getting from people who've been using this in, at, at colleges and universities is that they submit this and uh, the, you know they read it and say, uh, yeah, it's okay. You don't have to get you don't have to get vaccinated. That's right. You don't want to accept the liability. There, it's all because see, all they're doing is offering you something. How you accept it is the key. It's a negotiation. Asking questions and inquiring is a negotiation. Now that's not the conclusion but you're pushing to the conclusion, and if they give you the, the outcome you want, then you've got ex proper acceptance. That's, that's equity, guys. That's all it is. It's just dealing with life that way. You know? So if anybody's, if everyone, if anybody's interested in that, or if anybody has somebody who's, who's concerned about going to school and they're requiring that, um, look, you know, from reading it, it looks like it's a good dog because yeah, it brings up you know, that, 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 yeah. that they're violating Nuremberg codes and everything. Yeah. Again, hopefully it's written in a way that it's not making claims. It's simply saying, please show me how this is not violating it. Please show me how that you will cover the insurance if this is not that. You're establishing a counteroffer. Everything's an offer. People think, oh, they noticed me. They told me. They ordered me. <laughs> There's no such thing. It's all offers. And it goes way better when you're talking to them versus fighting them. <laughs> all right. Okay, I'm going to get to the next call. Thank you, Mark. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, Laura, next up is uh, Lauren. Hey, Lauren, how you doing? Well, TJ, how are you? Good. All right. Hey, I, uh, I've been to, a, you know, last week I went to a couple of courts um, to kind of follow up on some of our students. And I tell you, um, Hey, by the way, let, hang on, let me say it. So everybody knows Lauren does a lot of work with us for our members that are doing the Slam Dunk Criminal Defense Program. So until preface that, with that's where he's assisting people in their education. Go ahead. So, so I go to court, and one of the things I, I have to say is if you have a case or you think you're going to go to court, I'm going to recommend that you go to court long before you have to go to court and just sit in the in, in, in the room and just watch what goes on because a lot of the people um, that go to court that I've, that I've witnessed, they get nervous. Of course, everybody's nervous. Uh, they're so busy trying to answer all the questions which they shouldn't be answering any questions, and they miss so many opportunities. 
um, we, we need to get better about how we address that. I think we need to, in, in our in our slammed up program, we do a lot of uh, role playing, and I'm the judge, and they're they're who they are. You know, um, we're just missing so many opportunities because we're so emotional. Or we're trying to, you know, act. I don't want to miss anything. And th th there are things that are going over your head that you just simply don't get. But one of the yeah. things that we do in that course, we have a document that we give. Um, I don't know if I can get the name or not, but it, it's a document that we submit to the courts early on in, in, in your case, yep. they have a, a, I'm telling you guys on this phone, they have the most difficult time in the world addressing this document. Um, I've even seen a judge strike a notice, which you can't strike a notice. She wanted to deny a notice. How do you deny a notice? I'm just yeah, kidding. Well, yeah, it's not their or not the authorities is not a notice. It's just notice. It's all it's like saying, I did not fact that I mailed you something. It already happened. <laughs> and, and and we had another judge that said she didn't understand the bill of particulars of what the document is and what it right. does and what it says. And she wanted wanted us to give her a wanted our people to give her a definition of what those were. I was like, no, that's actually yeah. for the prosecutor to do. That's not. Exactly, it's for the prosecutors. It's a private instrument. It's a private counter offer to the, who the person who made the offer, which is the prosecutor. The court's not making the offer to you. The, 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 the prosecutor is. And so when I go to them first, right out of the Bible, you know, offer to accept it, but hey, here are some conditions. I need you to answer these questions so I know what I'm accepting. That's all it's doing. It's a, <clears throat> it's a conditional acceptance. And boy, it does, it messes them up. It's beautiful. And it's strictly something we do if you're in the Flam Duck coaching, private coaching program. Um, but you have to know how to implement it and do it carefully. Otherwise, they'll roll right over you. That's why we only do it in a coaching. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, that, that, that's all I got. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, next caller is uh, Charles. This is Charles. Charles. Do you, do you hear me? Barely. Where are you at? You sound like you're on a space mission or something. Yeah, I'm on the phone. I'll talk louder. Can you hear me now? On a regular telephone, speaking directly into it? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, I took a, uh, a status affidavit to the courtroom, to the uh, court filing, and I asked them to file it for me in their files. And they said, well, let me check with my supervisor, and then they... they came back and said, well, we can't do that. And I said, well, how come? They said, well, our district attorney says that uh, he, we, we, we're not following those. And I, I said, <laughs> and that was it. Uh, I, I went back again and asked the same question again, and I said, I'd like to see the district attorney, and he wasn't there, of course. Uh, so I said, what's the reason? And so they, they, they did talk to him, and he said, well, there's no law that says I have to have that put in the filing. Right. Okay, so I couldn't answer it with a question. I guess I could. I wasn't, discuss, I wasn't talking with him. I, I tried twice to call him on the phone, and, and mm -hmm. I got a, a, a machine, and then one time he answered it, and uh, I, I don't know, I forget what all happened, but he's very difficult to get in a touch with, and they don't want you to put anything in on the record. What would you well, That's not necessarily the problem. See, there's something else here. I mean, in, when you go in to file something, usually into a court or a public record, usually people do the status affidavit into almost the property records. And uh, just to, then once it's in a public record somewhere, it becomes admissible evidence. They can deny evidence all day long if it's not admissible evidence, and there's a definition for that. And you haven't made that document admissible evidence first, thereby forcing them to accept it into the public record. Oh, how do you do that? <laughs> okay, there's a couple of ways. Um, I don't. There's a new one we've got. Uh, you can pub. I don't like using things where, like, you know, you go to go down to Georgia. There's some counties that'll record documents there. But once they're in the public record, they're now public record, and you can take certified copies and now say, "Hey, this is a public document. You have to accept it." That's one way. Um, the other way is um, the way I in our status program that we have. It's not supposed to be filed as a status document. It's filed. 
as a power of attorney. Guess what? They have a category in their system for powers of attorney. They have to record them. Oh. And it's an okay. attachment to the power of attorney. That's, that's how we get it in. But you have to have the right power of attorney saying the right thing, appointing the right party the way the status document reads to act as, and then you, you're, you become the power of attorney for that entity. And then they have a little checkbox. I talked to a recorder once about this. They said, look, it's not that we don't want to record this stuff. They told me the same thing. They said, but we don't have a little box to check. We can't put it in our system. They're like robots. You're putting a square peg in a round hole. You're asking them to. They see if you had a public document, they go, oh, we got a box for that. Click. Or we have power of attorney. Oh, we have a box for that. Click. Then it gets in. I see. Make sense? Well, wow. you got to follow the rules of procedure. This is why I talk so much about rules of evidence, rules of procedure, and why you got to know those things too, because you'll be dumbfounded like you, where you just, it doesn't make sense. Actually, it does make sense. They have procedures. Make sure it fits in their procedures, and you'll be fine. Okay. okay? Thank you. You bet. Thanks. Wayne, I see you up there. I saw you waving in your camera. How you doing? Yeah, I was just going to say there is a, normally a provision to be able to file on demand. They can't refuse that. If you just ask for right. the file, it's discretionary. But when you say file on demand, they have a stamp for that too. Yeah, there you go. That'll work too. But you can, you know, you're always in sort of an a adversarial position with them, but they'll do it. Can I relate a, a story about a conditional acceptance? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I ran across Howard Freeman <clears throat> in the early uh, early 90s in his UCC connection. Yep. And he made the point very forcefully to me that it doesn't when you get a presentment, which is a demand for money or performance, as long as you do something, then you uh, shift the burden of proof to the other side. And they normally can't meet that burden. Right. For for example, I had a, uh, a EDD guy in employment development. I hadn't filed any documents with him for about three years, and he comes back and says, "Well, we reviewed your file. We're debiting your. You haven't paid anything, so we're debiting your account for eighty-five thousand dollars. Please pay this amount." So I sent it back to him. <clears throat> Dear Mr. EDD, um, thank you very much for your resentment. I'm returning it because it is erroneous. Please provide the document containing my valid signature wherein I agree to pay this. And you there say you go. back to him. It's a conditional acceptance, but the burden of proof yep. shifts. And this this guy here is the only one out of maybe hundreds of these that I've done. Where he came back, instead of asking for the eighty five thousand dollars, a couple weeks later he said, Well, uh, you're correct, our presentment was erroneous. Would you please pay eight thousand five hundred? And you can only guess what he got in response to that one. <laughs> and so we got the uh, erroneous presentment again. And he came back a couple of weeks later and says, well, thank you very much. Your credit card presentment for $8,500 was erroneous. Just pay $250. At that time, I said, go ahead and sue me. But it's a, uh, when you get these demands for performance of money, all it takes is a, uh, is to return a term for some valid reason. I try, yep. I tried fraud, and that works. I tried mistake, and that's that that works. But the erroneous presentment is the easiest because they never have your consent to send the bill to you in the first place. Yep, that's all I've got to say. Does you have a question? That's very good, very concise. I, I love that approach, and you've proven it works over the years. Yep. Guys, I hope you're listening. It's a conditional acceptance with a condition. In his case, he's saying it's an erroneous presentment. Now you got to prove why, where it's not. Burden proof falls on the, the claimant, and they're still the claimant. And they can never meet that burden proof. That's right. And if you just follow through and follow up and keep it strictly in that realm of offer and acceptance, instead of getting emotionally involved in the money and the charge and they're illegal and they're criminals, just do business with them. It goes way better. It really does. 
Yeah. I, I had one agency over the years. The my bill, if you would, was up to half a million dollars, and they never ever could collect it. In years before that, before I understood the process, I'd spend ten, twenty, thirty thousand bucks a year on these fines. But every alphabet agency operates on the same principle: is they make you an offer and count on you dishonoring their offer. And all you have to do is return it for this simple reason. It doesn't matter what the reason is. Okay. Well, if I go back to um, the, the definition of a remittance, money sent by one person to another, they're sending you money, either in specie or bill of exchange, check, or otherwise, since it's an offer. You've got to do something with it. It's a hot potato. You just sit on it. They're going to presume you want to pay it. You respond, now the burden of proof is back in their court. You just hit the tennis ball back and you stand there and wait. It's a, good, it's a great, great way to look at it, Wayne. Thank you. Are you all done? I'm all done. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, I don't have anybody else in the queue at the moment. So if you've got a question or you want to do a little role play, hey, Lawrence, you're out there. If you're still there, once you raise your hand, you'd like to be the next victim? If anybody wants to do that, we can do Maybe we'll do it with Lauren. Okay, he, he apparently wants to be a victim. He raised his hand. Oh, there's Lawrence. Hang on a second. Why is your hand not coming up? That's weird. Hang on a second, Lawrence. I'm getting a little error here. It's not letting me click on your hand. I'll play. Huh? I'll play. Well, I can't. I'm just going to give him the courtesy to do it since he's raised his hand, but I just, so I'm having a little technical issue here. So hang on a second. Uh, there he is. Okay. Lawrence. <laughs> That was funny. <laughs> you're playing. You're playing conditionally acceptance here. You're, you're raising your hand, but not speaking. Yeah. Okay. So wait, can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you. Great. Thanks. Okay. Awesome. So, let, I'm going to uh, put a condition on the game here. I want to make sure that there's a clarification on the word conditional in this conditional acceptance game. The condition has to be pertinent to the original offer because the word condition in condition means a rule or dominion. So it must go within the dominion. That makes sense? Yeah, but I'm just trying to put you in a situation where you may not, they may not know those rules. Well, uh, to give the example, right, just to tell people understand how the game works, because you guys might want to play this too. If I was to buy a house, you know, I can straight up accept the offer to buy it, or I can conditionally accept by asking for proof or the original deed of ownership on the house. The condition is on the original offer. It's not outside the offer. Okay. So you want to get specific. So, so yeah, I want to see that specific deed that's the matter that involves the matter. Like like when you were saying, your presentment is erroneous. It's missing something. Can you please provide that? It's as simple as that, right? Um, I mean, I didn't consent to that ticket, but I just kind of put it in different words, and they realized that, yeah, you know, not really. <laughs> I just let this go. <laughs> they could see where I was going. Um, so, uh, Lawrence, uh, uh, I've knocked on your door. FBI. Hello. <laughs> oh, FBI? Hello. FBI. How are you? Which FBI are you talking about? The one that's on my badge right here. Here's my ID. We'd like to ask you oh. a few questions. Is this you on this ID? Uh, yes, that's my ID. Okay, well, I'm going to go in the other room with this ID and communicate to it because this is you on this ID, right? You can wait <laughs> outside. <laughs> okay, get him. Straight jacket. Um. <laughs> Uh, well, sir, we just want to ask you a few friendly questions. We, you know, we're just uh, we're investigating a matter, and we thought maybe your information might be helpful to us. Oh, which matter are we referring to? 
Well, um, all I can tell you is it involves, it involves um, someone you know. Uh, his name is Jesse, and uh, he's, uh, he's been using uh, an alternate name for Jesus Christ, calling himself Jesse, and we're after him for that. Oh. Uh, which Jesse are we talking about? Well, it's, and I'll use his name. His name is Jesse Smith. Do you know him? Oh, Mr. Smith? Oh, well, uh, what kind of knowing are we talking about? Like, biblically knowing him? Well, as you might have known, you're of a friendship. You know who he, do you know who he is? Do I know who he is? Well, that depends on what you mean by the word no. Well, do you, have you spoken to him? Do you have any discussions with him? Have I spoken to him? Well, if I know him, wouldn't that mean I have spoken to him? But who, which... We just got to make sure that, you know, we're talking about the right no here. Well, uh, have you ever uh, met with him, spoken to him on the phone, anything like that? Oh. Have I met him? Have I spoken to him on the phone? Which phone? Any phone. It's fine. Have you spoken to him on any phone? Well, I've spoken to the phone. <laughs> Sir, it seems even like you're just trying to be a little smart ass here. <laughs> um, by the way, we do have your record here too, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> if you'd like well, to talk about what's in this book, we can do that too. But we really just want to ask you about Mr. Smith there. Um, this record. Are you familiar with any of his business activities? Anything he does? Am I familiar with his business activities? Uh, which business activities are we talking about? Which business are we referring to, and which activities are you specifying? Well, it's any that you might have had some involvement with. Oh, have I had involvement with? What is an involvement? Are we talking, like, romantically? Uh, no, sir. Uh, we're, we're not presuming if you're one of those. But not that there's anything wrong with that, but um, it's... Uh, that you're... you're that uh, you maybe maybe you did some business with him, you worked for him, you had a business dealing with him. Oh, well. Did you have any? Did I have any business arrangements with him? Right. Hmm. Have you ever had a business arrangement with him? Exchange money for services, anything like that? Oh, well. My understanding of business is, you know, I've uh, waved at him. Like, are we talking like that? Are we talking like the song, Whose Business We're talking about doing it's, it's business. Saying so you, song don't, you, know, you don't know what doing some, a business arrangement is? Well, in this context, I'm a little unclear. Would you uh, help specify it? Sure. For example, have you ever uh, driven a truck for him to deliver something for him? Oh. Have I driven a truck for him? Hmm. Well, any truck. Oh, sure, why not? I've driven a truck. To deliver anything at his request for pay? Oh, well, at his request for pay, I have not. You have not. So on October 31st of 2020, you didn't borrow a truck from him and drive it from your city of Camas to Olympia, Washington, and he paid you something for that. You never did that. Well, I transported his money, but I didn't take it for myself. Oh, I just screwed up on that. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> you made a statement. I did. <laughs> as soon as you made a statement, how quickly it was over, no matter what you said. Exactly. You were doing good at that point. The next thing I was going to hit you with was the photos and have you deny that, but see what you do. That's how they circle <laughs> win, you know. Well, so I suppose, that, you know, that question is, you know, it's like, well, on this October, well, do you have any evidence of that October ha happening? What are you referring to? <laughs> Matter of fact, you do have a photograph. You used this a minute ago, denied you lied to a federal officer if you're, if you're lying, by the way. Well, uh, uh, no, no, I'm not lying. I'm just asking you for some parts on it. Like, if you have this well, photograph, I, if I I catch you lie. You're a lie. It's a lie, isn't it? It's all a lie, right? It's, uh, what do you call it? Uh... <laughs> 
I just want to show you how these guys do it and how they work you yeah. into getting to this point where you make a statement. And they give you go around and around and around and around until you make some statement. And then that statement usually is the zinger. It's amazing how you did it. And um, But it's not amazing because they, they could keep going and then say, well, what about this photograph? Is that not you? you know? <laughs> and you can play that's not me, but, you know, well, when I show this to a jury, what do you think they're going to believe? Well, who's sort of a lot of you want to take back that line? So, but anyway, so you got to be careful. You went. Problem is, is here's what your problem was. You went on too far. Mm. You kept going. Oh yeah, I didn't close it. Duh, it's got to end you in an agreement somewhere, right? You know, say, so is there anything I can help you with? Well, no. Well, well, we'd like to ask you a few questions. Well, what, I, what, what are the nature of these questions? What business do I have involved with, with whatever you're discussing? Would you tell me what this is about? Well, we don't need further to discuss. I'll tell you what, I reserve my right to remain silent, and you guys have a nice day. Boom. Out. You don't want to sit there and have this conversation with these people because they will win every time. Mm -hmm. Step their offer, throw them back, throw it back to them, say, well, we can talk in the future if you can show me how, I'm, how this involves me. Until then, have a nice day. I reserve my right to remain silent, according to my legal counsel. Well, we, you don't need the legal counsel. We're just going to ask you a few friendly questions. What was that general they said that to? They basically tried to indict him? Oh, Flynn. Flynn. Don't worry about it. We're just here on informal business. We're just eating cornflakes, man. Come on. You know, next thing you know, they ask him a couple of zinger questions, and they got him for lying. You cannot talk your way out. Do a couple of conditional acceptances and tell them I have nothing further to say and have a nice day. Yeah. If they count on you. They count on your confession for everything. Like Wayne said, you know, so you just can turn it right back to them. Mm. You gotta you've had an error. Uh, so you when you explain this to me in the right context, then then we can talk further. Have a nice day. End of story. And same thing goes in a conversation, you know. I mean, do you, let me ask you, you go to a restaurant and, and you order food. Do you sit there and describe, you know, well, where did you catch the fish? And was a hook used or was a, was a six-pound test line used? Did you use any lead weights on that fish when you were catching it? You, know, you just go on and on. You just order the fish and, and go back about what you're doing, right? So mm -hmm. you got to be careful about the the continuing trying to prove you can stay up with them trap. Mm -hmm. If you're doing good at the very first, and then I was like, okay, you're going to keep going with this? Or, I couldn't like, think of the clothes. They can do it all day long. They can do it all day long. They always have a second witness. Why? Because that's what, the, the, what that gives them a witness for a court. So they have two of them. And they're always trying Whenever to Whenever there are two more monkeys. Yep. Yep, there are two more gathered. So it's all biblical. You know, you could do a quick acceptance, could throw a condition on them, have them leave, play the game. You're not you're not you're not in denial when you simply say I refuse, I don't have nothing further to say. You ask a couple of questions and then you close it out. You'd be surprised how often they go outside and they go, Well that that blew up, you know, when you do that. Do they need that confession? So hmm. Yeah, that's how it's that's how it's played. My tell you my story, my son. First, they asked him, "Why were you going so fast?" I had to pee. What was the first question in the trial? What was the first thing you asked him? I asked him, "Why was he going so so fast?" What did he say? Because he had to pee. Oh, guess that's confession. See, how, boom, it's just that. That's all they need. The rest is just oh, but statute code whatever four zero seven eight nine seven says. <laughs> oh really? You didn't deny it though. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you you admitted guilt versus and accepted it and returned it and settled the accounting. We wouldn't be talking about a cross examination if you'd done an acceptance. Never get in that situation. How can I take care of this matter today? Well, you can answer a few questions. Well, I've been advised by counsel not to speak further about these kind of matters. So have a nice day. Easy peasy. 
You can see on the cop shit sometimes they'll say the guy won't talk and they're like, man, we're stuck until we get something out of it. You know? I mean, that guy in the courtroom, I was telling you a story about the guy's, uh, I'm here on that matter. And then they go, well, so-and-so, are you so-and-so? Well, I'm here on that matter. Boom, $25,000 warrant, go <laughs> after him. And he says, well, wait a minute. He says, oh, you must be him. You just, just spoke as if you were him. Boom, arrest him. He's under a warrant. And I've never seen a warrant issued and executed so fast. It was right on TV. You got me at hello. Got you at hello. That's right. You, he completed them. <laughs> he completed the contract. You complete me. There you go. So that's how it's done, guys. It's just a, it's a, everything you see, everything is a remittance. Your goal is to get to an acceptance, get a deal, and get out of there. Don't fight who they are and why they are. They are there to serve the bankruptcy, to keep the system going, which actually keeps you alive. So don't complain about it. Like it or not, we're in a bankrupt system. Have been since the beginning of time, actually. And uh, it's just been formalized in our last century. It isn't going away. We're not going to fight our way out of that. But we can learn how to do business within it. I mean, who does, uh, here we go, okay, Donald Trump. Oh, he's been bankrupt, you know, three or four times or seven times or whatever it is. Has he? No, he hasn't. His businesses have, and he understands how to do the remittance game. And he settles the accounts. He's the one following the rules. Is he bad because he does that? No, not, not in my opinion. He's just wise enough to use the rules to his advantage. And that's all we're trying to teach you to do here is see things for what they are, negotiate properly, and do things that give you an advantage. You don't destroy the system. You don't go hide in a cave and live like a caveman. You know, I'm not going to have any forms of ID or no, 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 all this stuff. Yeah, it's, 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 how are you handle that, it's up to you. It doesn't matter to me. What matters is the offers and the acceptances. That's going on all day long, and it's going to happen until the day you die. Doesn't the priest offer a Catholic a piece of bread? And a lot of people say that's just a piece of bread. But what is it, Lawrence? It's supposed to be the body of Christ. Does it represent the, the body there. of Christ, or it is the body of Christ? Well, it has to represent it. No, it's It'd be kind of freaky if you're not eating it. That's, that's the point, is... It's, it's accepted as it is. That's the difference. A lot of people don't understand that. I'm not trying to make a religious point. I'm just making a point. That's what they offer. That's what we accept, and that's the contract. That's the covenant. That it's not a representation of anything. It is. It converts, right? I'm just telling you what they believe. I'm not saying what the two parties believe. The transubstantiation, that's great. So my point is, is it can be anything. It can be lunch. It could be a church religious service. It could be, you know, a court. It could be a, a, an interaction with a cop. I mean, any discussion you have with anybody that might be in law enforcement can, can work, turn, turn into a contract real quick. Not to say you should avoid it. Hey, man, I treat people with respect, and I, I hope they do a great job. But I'm watching my language. I'm handling my contract. Each situation is unique. I handle that ticket differently than I did the other tickets. But with a point of view towards that goal, the words come. And that's what people can do. Mm -hmm. You know, this takes practice. So the assignment for this week, everybody here, till next, Tuesday, next time around, is do that every single day for the next two weeks. In every and don't do it like I did. Close it. But close the deal. Exactly. Get to the closure quickly. I don't care whether you're ordering lunch, whether you're speaking to your wife, whether you're saying, hey, can you pass this? See, I'll say pass the salt. Or I, well, I say, can you pass the salt? If they say, no, I can't. I said, well, if I ask you nicely, will you? you know, it's, it's, but you're doing it in a way where you're asking for participation in something. You're, you're, you see what I'm saying? You're putting things in the form of a question as much as possible with the mindset of you know, negotiating something to happen and get to the acceptance mm -hmm. quickly. And sometimes it'll happen so fast, you go, well, that, that doesn't count. Well, then, yeah, it does count. Offered, accepted, over. You know? 
hey, that, 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 that sushi is $56. Well, here's $60. You want $4 back? Yeah. Okay. We'll round it down to the 56. We'll leave it at 56. That's all. The offer acceptance negotiation happening at the same time. But you can say, hey, would you throw in a little extra this if I, if I give the extra four bucks or whatever? I can counter offer. See what I'm saying? Practice it in every little thing in your life. See what happens. You know, ordering Starbucks. Hey, do you think you could, you know, take this out and add that in? <laughs> Don't they do that all the time when you order Starbucks? It's confusing, but <laughs> I don't know how they do it, but they get good at it. You know? Um, whatever it is. And always ask for a little bit more and watch if you don't increase your wealth in the next week. I'm talking about a gain of a dollar over what you would have gotten if you just kept your mouth shut and acted shy. I say that shy people get nothing because they're yeah. silent. Because they're si silence is acquiescence. Don't be an acquiescer. <laughs> That's a good word. Say, so, well, you just one more thing. Just one more thing. <laughs> it's the story of the talents, right? That's right. Well, it's the Columbo. Oh, Mr. Johnson, just one more thing. And that was the last question. It's going to be the killer. So, anyway, that's, that's, how, I'll, that's how I'd suggest we do it. Anybody else have questions out there? Raise your hand, star six, or raise your hand on the queue. Otherwise, we will be able to shut, shut this one down. Anybody been on a... Um, um, those who are curious about, this, again, the equity class, we're still accepting some applications for that. URL.org forward slash equity, um, equity enroll, sorry, it's the word is equity enroll. But it's also, if you go to the premium member page, there's a couple of videos there. We'll get into some detail on how to do that. I do have a chat question. Um, I've been fighting a case for five years now, child support. I see there's a word right there. There's got a debtor in here. And if I... Now, if I want to convert my strategy to acceptance, what would be the best venue, core office, mail center for me to use acceptance method? Uh, how could one best achieve this? Well, okay. Well, you've got probably an order in place, first of all, because you're coming at this very late. And the problem is that sometimes you have to undo. If you're coming in late in a process, you have to undo some things. So what we're doing in the coaching, when we're doing private coaching on equity, we show people how to do a um, – um, a removal of the signature, basically, okay, a rescission. And the res so you have rescission, rescind some of the agreements you've already gotten into. And it depends on the documents. I mean, we look at each one individually. And then um, you can then file, take the next bill that comes and do an acceptance and return it, offer to settle it. And you can do that now, technically, but it's better if you first also rescind any agreements because you went into it fighting, as you said, instead of accepting it. And that's where the problem is. That's why it's a burden to you. Accept it. Tell them to sell the accounting. They can do it. But, you know, you're going to have to take a little bit. It's probably a little more complex than that because it's again, apparently been going on a while. If it was the beginning of the case. You're walking in, only a couple things have happened. That might be one thing. So um, you, do, you can use basically what I just told you. You know, right? Accept it, date it, sign it, the bill, return it. With that in mind, but be ready for what comes next. And that's what uh, we'd have to do some individualized coaching to look at the documents. Then you'd have to inquire about getting into the equity coaching. It's really hard to describe and tell you. There's no template. None of this is template driven. It's driven by the nature of the situation and the offer you're in. You have to look at everything. Okay? One person who is very wise told me he says the, the acceptance has to reflect the offer word for word. There actually has to be something written that literally reflects, like a mirror, the words of their documents. And some of them have to be rescinded because you've bound yourself to fight them as opposed to accept it. You can't get to acceptance until you clear up the mess. So that's how I'd approach it. Um, let's click away my screen. Okay. No other questions in the queue? No other questions, uh, hands raised at this point. No other chats. Oh, there goes somebody just popped up. 
I don't know who this is. Eric Clark, 431. Um, this is that's no document. Are you on a speakerphone or, or something? You're selling underwater. Sound like you're underwater and I just hear scratching. Now you're gone. Okay, we've got another uh, caller up there, Erica267. 267. Go ahead. Yes, hello. Hello. Okay. Okay. I want to piggyback off of the uh the um topic of the child support. So I have a similar situation, however, I never went in um signing anything. I basically was defaulted into um uh them sending me out, you know, notices of um um, child support that was due. You say so you defaulted in. It's a little hard to hear. You said you defaulted in by not responding, basically. Yeah, yeah. I had no knowledge okay. that it was Got even it. going on. Got so it. what I did was started to. Uh, I started to send them a bill. So I'm 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 at that point now where I'm asking them to uh, validate and verify what they call the debt and to. Um, if they, you know, if they don't respond, um, I'm going to go through that whole administrative administrative process, and uh, I'm I'm near the end of that, so I'm getting ready to file my uh, my suit. Oh, so my you're pretty far along your administrative process, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happened was, <clears throat> I'm in I'm in Pennsylvania, and this is coming out of Delaware, so they never really had. Um, any kind of jurisdiction to serve me or anything like that, and they tried to initiate Pennsylvania to get in on the bandwagon. Now, are you and sure? I, I fought. Well, because I have I have paperwork from Pennsylvania saying a zeroed out account, and that they weren't going to uh, uh, proceed any further, and so. Okay. That 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 means that they would lack standing in trying to collect from me. That's correct. Am I correct? Yeah, so, yeah. So, if, if they so have now, a document that says we, the count is zero, then there should be nothing further to collect them. What are they collecting? Well, they, 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 they were trying to offset um, my last year's taxes. I didn't do it this year. Well, why were they offset because your taxes? I, you know, that's they already paid. That's that's what I'm trying to understand also. Yeah. Um and that's that that's what that's what catapulted my uh my my process, you know, towards them. Because yeah. uh well, like if, I, if I have it you still think you have some interesting facts in your favor, which is good. If you got facts like that, that's a really great place to hold your ground, you know. Why is this and again yeah. inquiring, you know. I'll conditionally accept your offer. I'm not denying. See, you say I deny and I won't because that's one thing. But it's another thing to say, hey, I'll, I'll do whatever you tell me to do as long as you can prove to me that this document right here doesn't prove that there is a zero balance. And if not, then you need to stop. So you have to put a condition on them. And then that puts them yeah, in a yeah, well, I didn't even I didn't even give them the, uh, the heads up that I had the document because I was going to figure out after um, – because it's it's the burden of proof is on them to provide. Um, yeah, but that you they know, even have a contract in the first place. But you know, why would you say, hey, like like Wayne said earlier, he always comes out from the same approach. Basically, your presentment is erroneous, and then he names why it's erroneous. He says, so I'll accept it and pay it as soon as you show me how it's not erroneous based upon this evidence. So it is not putting the burden of proof on you. You're you're certainly showing them some evidence. But you're putting the burden proof on them okay. as a conditional acceptance. See, now you can form your contract. You're denying and denying that that never works. You got to accept it. You want to get to an acceptance. Well, well, I was, I was thinking about putting that in my claim after you know after this last time. This will be the third you time. Give them an opportunity to see your full conditional acceptance. You have to do a final notice of claim. Now, here's what I have. I have this. I have that. I, your claim is erroneous. I give you one more opportunity to withdraw your claim and accept 
this offer because this matter has been already resolved, and here's the proof. You got to show them what you, your, your, what's on, show them your dice, man. You know, show them what you got. Then, and you say, and then I'll proceed. So now you're no longer in a state of denial. I, I don't like threatening to sue when you haven't fully established a contract. Now, if they don't, they want to withdraw, then there's yeah. no point in suing. You don't want to sue people, do you? You're not going to get any money out of it if you no. don't. No. No. no say, hey, so there's apparently a mix-up here. Let's get this resolved. I'll pay your bill if you can show me that it's not erroneous. And here's why it's erroneous, and here's the evidence. And I'll give you yeah. 14 days to respond, and I'll accept your silence as your agreement that this matter is already resolved. Now, if you go to court, you've already won. You don't even have to go to court. You just say, okay, what are we doing here? Come on. Yeah. If you've got evidence like that, then just play it out. But put it on, put a conditional acceptance and show it to them. Because your fact that if you didn't give it to them, that's why they're continuing. They don't really know. So the other hand doesn't know what the other hand's doing. Show it to them. Okay. Are you sure you want to pursue this? Here's what I got. I'd rather just rather get this settled here. Why don't we just all agree to settle this? Do it like that. Man, you're there to negotiate, get it all figured out. Then once you get something from them, then boom, you tell the IRS, you tell everybody else, you know, back off. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. okay. Get that, get that oh, acceptance and settlement mindset, and you'll probably get this thing done. Let me know how it turns out.